By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at Alpha 40 League Magic. That means both of the, of the decks you're going to look at today play with 100% Alpha Magic Cards. How cool is that? Alpha, of course, the first expansion, the start of Magic the Gathering, released in 1993. And we're going to play uh, the Alpha game according to the Alpha League rules. And maybe you're wondering, what is that Alpha League? What's Alpha 40 League? Well, it's a rule set designed by the Northern Paladins, and uh, they made it so that the Alpha would be balanced and kind of comes close to the way it was like to play in 1993. Now, you cannot go back in time, but I think these rules are some of the best there are when you're interested in playing an alpha-only format. So if you're interested in the rules, check out the description below. There I've placed a link. Click on that link and that will take you to this specific rule set. And if you're into it, it's really worth taking a look. They've done a great job on this. So really a shout out to the Northern Paladins and also a thank you from me to you guys for designing this and taking the time and sharing it with all of us. Now in today's match I'm playing against Anis and Anis is playing with a mono black Drudge skeleton deck and uh, guess what I'm also playing mono black but I'm playing a little bit more traditional I guess. Now before I dive into the deck decks because I've got deck photos of both of these decks I would first like to point out that like always you can click on the uh, timestamp in the description below the one that reads MDG games and that will take you straight to the action. I know that some of you like to first watch the match and then look at the deck deck or just skip the deck deck altogether. All that is possible. Check the description below for the timestamps. Now, without further ado, let's start by going through these decks and I'm going to look at the deck of my opponent first, Anise's Drudge Skeletons. And here you see the deck of my opponent, Anis, and you can probably understand why I've called it Drudge Skeleton. So you can see he's playing with a total of eight Drudge Skeletons, one black and one to cast for a 1-1, one, one, and for one black you can regenerate it. So it's a pretty cool creature, and obviously he's using it in combination with Pestilence. So Pestilence, two black and two to cast, and for one black it deals one damage to any creature, and every, two, I should say, every creature and every player. So it's pretty good. And he also plays with Weakness. That's kind of a card that I love to see, minus two, minus one, and those Weaknesses are really good against my Hypnotic Spectres, because Hypnotic Spectre is a 2-2 flyer that I play with uh, and it needs to deal damage and if it deals damage you have to discard a card but when you put a weakness on it it has zero power so it cannot deal damage anymore so I think it's going to be interesting to see. Another thing is we're playing mono black against mono black right this is also a mono black deck and he's playing with terror main well actually everything's main because there is no no sideboard in this format and I'm also playing with terrors so I think we both have some dead cards in hand which makes it kind of fair. We're also both playing with uh, Drain Lives. I think Drain Lives could be decisive in this matchup, especially in a game with Pestilence, because uh, Drain Life works both ways, of course. It takes life from your opponent, or can. You can also use Drain Life against a creature. But I think in this, uh, in this matchup, I think taking life from the opponent directly is probably a better deal, because it takes life from the opponent, and you also gain life. And when you're a Pestilence player, the trick, of course, is to make sure that you have more life than your opponent. So my job will be to kind of try to get Anis lower than me. And then it's going to be harder and harder for him to use his Pestilence. So that's kind of my plan. But um, yeah, it's um, it looks like a neat little, little deck. I also really like that uh, single Howl from Beyond in there. I think that could also be a game changer that can come out of nowhere and, you know, and, uh, and win him the game. So it's quite interesting. So this is the deck of Anis. Now let's take a look at my deck. And here is my deck. As you can see, it's also mono black and um, I've called it Demonic Horde. So first off, I'd like to apologize for this uh, shitty deck photo. I had to take it very quickly. Well, actually, I didn't, but for some reason, this was the best deck photo I could take when I was playing the games. I don't know why, but this, this deck is beautiful and it deserves a better deck photo. And I also would like to thank Dion because he's the person that actually lend this deck to me. So these are not my cards, I'm playing with Dion's cards and he's also in the tournament by the way and I'll definitely make an episode of his deck which looks, wow, it's an amazing deck. But let's focus on this deck. So as you can see it's mono black and it's got some of the usual suspects, right? You see the three Hypnotic Spectres uh, that are of course very good in this format but also 
There are a lot of weapons against the Hypnotic Spectre and Alpha 40. Of course, you've got Earthbind, and in this particular matchup, you've got the Weakness, the card that I already mentioned. And then you also see two uh, Sengir Vampires. I think they are going to be very powerful. And then there's this one Royal Assassin. Now, Royal Assassin is such a strong card. If your opponent is unable to deal with Royal, Royal can single-handedly give you the victory. And talking about single-handedly, it actually works better with another card. So I should say dual-handedly can give you the victory because once once I have an Icy Manipulator on the board, I can have my traditional Icy Manipulator Royal Assassin combo, right? Royal Assassin, a card for two black and one for a 1-1. One, one. Tap it, destroy target tapped creature. Icy Manipulator, an artifact for four to cast and for one tap target um, creature or land or artifact. But in this case, I can start tapping creatures. Then the creature of my opponent is tapped and I can use Royal to kill the creature. So that is, of course, a very strong combo. The problem with Royal is it is small. It only has one toughness. It's easy to kill, right? The weakness in this case, in this scenario, can kill it already. Uh, we also see one anime dead, and then we see three sinkholes. So sinkholes, I think in this matchup, they're not going to matter that much, but especially when you play against decks that have multiple colors, it can be a great card to play. And regardless, an early sinkhole is always a great play because it slows your opponent down and it gives you kind of a tempo advantage. So I think early game, the sinkhole is still useful against uh, my match uh, here against Anis. Uh, then we also see three Jade Statues. Now, Jade Statue, it's such a cool and, and quirky card. It's, it's one of the reasons I love the early days of Magic because cards like this just exist in the early days. Jade Statue, four to cast, and then it's just an artifact, right? It's a, it's a statue. It doesn't do anything. But during my combat, and during my combat alone, I can pay two and I can turn it into a 3-6 creature. And it turns back in a statue at the end of combat. So you can actually not use a sorcery against the Jade statue. You can't, you know, because it's a statue again. At least if that sorcery uh, is creature removal. So it's it's quite interesting. For example, weakness cannot be used against the Jade statue just to to give you an example, but also Paralyze. And, you know, there are other cards. You cannot play Control Magic on it. It is surprisingly um, strong in an alpha-only environment. Jade Statue, very, very cool card. Then I've got my JM Day Tome, which can be very powerful to draw some cards. I've got two Drain Lives. Uh, Anis also has some Drain Lives. I have the Terrorist, right? Terror is going to be use useless. But my opponent also has Terror, so th those cards kind of cross each other out. And then the card that I'm going to mention last and that I kind of named the deck after, Demonic Hordes. I just love Demonic Hordes. I really look forward to cast Demonic Hordes as much as I possibly can with this deck because it's such a cool card. Three black and three to cast for a 5-5. Five five. And then during the upkeep, I've got to pay three black. If I cannot pay the three black, it becomes tapped and my opponent can destroy one of my lands and my opponent can choose. But if it stays untapped, I can tap it and I can destroy target land of my opponent. Or, of course, attack with it because it's a pretty big, beefy creature, right? A 5-5. Five, five. But I think I'm just going to use it to eat lands because that's that's what it does. That's what it wants to do. I mean, Demonic Hordes, I just love that card, man. I'm so happy, Dion, that you put it in this deck. Love it, love it, love it. And again, thank you so much for borrowing this deck out and inviting me over for this uh, Alpha 40 League event okay so um this is my deck we've seen anisa's deck now let's go to the match game number one here we go i'm sitting on the right with the timmy playmat and my opponent there with the alpha 40 playmat and it looks like uh, anis is on the play and as you can see in alpha 40 you can actually draw a card when you're on the play and he's playing his first drudge skeletons and passing turn here and there's an attack going to 19 another drudge skeleton and pass turn Casting something here for three. Okay, there's an Hypnotic Spectre, so let's see if I can deal some damage. Or is he going to take care of it? Okay, there we see a weakness, so it's turned into an 0-1 creature. Probably going to take two here, going to go to 17, or maybe Chum Block. Okay, decide to Chum Block. I do play with Anime Dead, so maybe I have an Anime Dead in hand. He's playing another Drudge Skeleton. So much power here, taking care of one of the Drudges because he stepped out with a Drain Life. Not sure if that's the best strategy, but at least it, uh, it takes some pressure off, I guess. Taking two damage instead of three, and there's a Pestilence. And man, it's not looking great for me. At least I'm still on 17, tapping four for a double sinkhole, taking care of two of his uh, swamps. And that's actually pretty relevant with that Pestilence on the table. There is another Drudge Skeleton. They just keep coming, the Skeletons. I've got six. 
playing a Sengir Vampire for five. It's a four, four flyer. At least that helps me a little bit. Doesn't get the plus one, plus one counter when creatures regenerate, by the way, unfortunately for me. So I'm taking some more damage, going down to 13. And what can I do here? Probably going to attack exactly dealing four and playing a Jade Statue, having enough mana as well to make it into a three, six during combat. So he's going to attack, so I'm going to animate and block one, taking two, going down to 11. Let's see what I can do. Probably going to swing in again and going to put him on 12. Deciding not to attack with the Jade Statue. That would have been an option as well, by the way, because I'm dealing three. I think that would have been better. And playing a Royal Assassin. Let's see if it sticks. If the Royal sticks, that would be kind of nice. But there is the Drain Life on the Royal Assassin. So Anis is going to 13. He's going to attack with all three. I'm going to block one. Going to take two. Go to nine. Let's see. Am I now going to attack? Again, I'm not attacking with the Jade Statue. I think that's not a very good decision. I think I should just uh, go in there. My opponent now on seven, I believe. There is a weakness on my Sengir Vampire. So it's now a 2-3 flyer. Minus 2, minus 1. And is he going to attack? I guess he is. Attacking with all three. Going to block one. Going to take two. Going to go to seven. I wonder if I'm not going to attack. I can put him on two if I just attack. Okay, there's a book and a basic swamp. I should just attack here. I'm not sure why I am in the tank. And three terrors in hand for Anis. Ah, oh, yuck. There's nothing he can do. But of course, I don't know that. So maybe I'm thinking, what's in his hand? Is there a drain life? Can he finish me off when he attacks and has a drain life? Maybe that's, maybe that's going through my, my head. I mean, he's on seven. I'm going to attack him for three, so he's going to go down. Okay, it was actually on nine. Okay, that changes the situation. So he's on now on six. Wow. I mean, he's going to swing in, right? And then he's going to deal two damage. I'm going to go down to five. He's going to be on six. The problem, of course, for Anis here is that he cannot kill me, and I can simply deal more damage. He can also decide to keep one of his drudges untapped to block my Jade Statue and now just attack with two instead of with three. That is another option. And he's passing turn. He's not attacking at all. And let's see what I can do here. Playing another Swamp. What is my best move? Probably swing in for two. Perhaps take a card first from the GM Day Tome just to see. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Drawing a card. And am I passing turn here? No, I'm attacking first. Attacking for two through the air. That means that he's going to go to four. And I really like the way that uh, Anis is kind of playing those cards. He's pretending that he's got something really good in hand, but he's not sure if he wants to use it. And it's actually just a terror that's pretty useless. He's got one other card in hand that I actually can't see. He's moving too quick. Perhaps another weakness? And I think he's going to go to four here. Oh, he's going to use the Pestilence to kill my Sengir. I didn't see that coming. Dealing three damage to everything. And now I'm playing a Hypnotic Spectre afterwards. And he can kill that hippie, but I don't mind because he's on a lower life total. Wow. He's going to pass turn here. I think it's going to be a draw, to be honest. Because he can use his Pestilence now to get a draw. I'm going to attack. And, ooh, he's going to use it. He's going to put me on two. He's on one. Playing another Jade Statue. And that's it. Okay, it's a draw. He's going to use the Pestilence to put us both on zero. That means his first game is a draw. How interesting. Game number two after that draw in game one. And we see Anis drawing his seven. Is he going to keep? 
Actually, there is something talking about is he going to keep... Uh, we're playing Alpha 40 League, so there is a mulligan rule. You can only take a mulligan if you have no lands or only lands. So I think Anisir had to keep a one lander, and now he's discarding a Drudge Skeleton. So it's actually not an option in the Alpha 40 League to, uh, to take a mulligan. You can only take a mulligan if you have no lands or only lands. And here we see me playing a Royal Assassin, by the way. In response, and he's just playing a weakness in his turn. Look at that. Even finding a single. Yuck. So even taking care of that single land and tapping four. There's an Icy Manipulator. He's playing a land. But now with that Icy, I can start tapping the land down. So this is not going to help Anis much. And can I play a threat to start dealing some damage? No, I can't. Just another Icy. Although the Icy is, of course, great to... Tap down the lands of Anis and making it really difficult for him to find an opening. He's got one swamp on tap now because he just played it out. So maybe he's got a dark ritual, for example, in hand, and that would allow him to do something. Untapping it again. Looks like he's thinking about casting the ritual. Deciding not to. Tapping down that land. Tapping six. Oh, demonic hordes! Yeah, baby! And this is probably not the best move, but, you know, you just want to play out of Demonic Hordes when you have one in hand. Who cares? Okay, Dark Ritual. Drudge Skeleton. Oh, Paralyze! This is a great move from Anis because now I've got to pay three black for the upkeep cost and four to untap, but I don't even have four. So this is a really good uh, play by Anis, and it shows... How much his deck can do with one little opener? Tapping down his one black mana, taking a damage from the Drudge. He's playing another land, by the way. And wow, this Demonic Horde's kind of turned on me here with that play from Anis. And okay, killing his Drudge Skeleton with a Drain Life. Not sure why I'm doing that. I think it would have been better to just keep his Swamp Step, to be honest, and taking the one damage from the Drudge. But I'm deciding not to. And passing turn here to Anis. Playing another Drudge. Untapping everything. And now I'm tapping everything again just to untap my Demonic Horde so I can start using it and gobble up his Lance. I just really want to use the Demonic Hordes here. Doesn't seem that I can do anything else, to be honest. Maybe I'm considering attacking, not doing it. And then before his draw step... So in his upkeep, I'm using the Demonic Hordes to eat one of his Swamps away. And he's passing turn. So again, paying 3 for the upkeep cost and 4 to just untap it because of that Paralyze. And now I can use it again to eat his last land away. That's exactly what I'm doing. And he's finding one more Swamp. Again, I'm untapping for the Paralyze and paying the upkeep cost, taking away his other Swamp. And he's attacking, putting me on 19. He's playing another Swamp. And again, I'm doing the same little trick. I really just want to eat away all his Swamps doing that now. Passing turn. Attacking. He is finding his Lance, right? Again, another Swamp. Now I can tap it down if I want to. Eating it up. Finding another one. And, you know, Anis says, I've, I've seen enough. I'm done, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, Anis. I just really love to use my Demonic Hordes and gobble up lands. I just love it. Um, okay, this is uh, game two, I guess. So we're getting ready for game number three. Game number three. Here we go. Anis on the play. Playing a Swamp, passing turn. And I'm also playing one and pass. Is he going to play a Sinkhole? Actually, I don't think he's playing with Sinkhole, by the way. Playing a Drudge Skeleton. I'm playing my second Swamp. Taking damage here, going to 19. There's another Drudge. And he's going to do what his deck wants to do. Just play out tons of Drudge Skeletons and start dealing damage. And there's a Hypnotic Spectre. I wonder if he's got another weakness. I hope not. Would love to kind of discard a card from him. But yeah, there's the weakness. <laughs> I mean, one can dream, right? Anyway, it's now an 0-1 creature. Playing another Swamp and playing an Icy Manipulator. And passing turn. Attacking with the both, going to go down to 15. Ooh, more pressure, Dark Ritual, and then a Pestilence. Tapping five for a Sengir Vampire. That's going to be pretty sweet. 
And he's attacking with both. I'm probably going to chump here just because my uh, my hippie is now an 0-1 flyer. So with the Pestilence, is very vulnerable. Yeah, I'm just going to block one. Going to save me a damage. And I'm actually not blocking on the Singir because um, Anis could then kill it with uh, by tapping three of his swamps. So I didn't want that to happen. Playing another Icy, going to attack him for four. So he's going to go down to 16. And uh, tapping two of his Drudges. He's going to play a weakness. I'm going to take a damage. He's going to go to 13. And my Sengir is now a 2-3 flyer. So it's not going to do that much damage. But I should be able to kind of win the race together with my two Icy. Stepping down his two Drudges probably next turn. Or do I have something to play out? Three cards in hand still. Tapping his two Drudges. So he can attack me for one. And I'd go to, go to 12. He's on 14 at the moment. And he can now also start using his Pestilence because he's got enough to regenerate them. And he's actually going to pay three, killing my Sengir. And uh, he's also going to lose one of his Drudge Skeletons in the process. But he can still regenerate too, so that's actually not a bad deal for Anis. And more importantly, he's kind of ahead on board. And I'm going to 10 with one Drain Life on a Drudge Skeleton. I wonder if I should do that. I keep using the Drudge Skele uh, the, the Drain Lives on the Drudge Skeletons. And I think when I'm looking back at these matches, I'm like, maybe I should just, you know, do it on, um, on the life total of Anis instead, you know. Unless, of course, you've got like a way to get rid of the other Drudge. Because if there's no creatures in the game anymore, uh, Pestilence destroys itself. It needs cre creatures in the game. And uh, he's using his Pestilence, dealing damage to both of us. I'm on 7, he's on 8. And they're playing a Jade Statue. And I'm going to tap down a land, and I'm going to tap down a Drudge. And in response, he's going to activate the Pestilence again. Activating it for 2, I believe. Going to go to 5, he's on 6. Going to animate... The statue attacking him here for three. It becomes a three six. He's going to go down to three. Ooh, I think this is a problem. And again, he can make it turn it into a draw. Are we going to see a second draw? I mean, these pestilence, man. They're pretty brutal. I'm not tapping down his lands. I don't want to push him, you know. Tapping five. He's going to play a drain life. Drain life for three. He's going to go to six. I'm going to go to two. Oh. This is a very good drain life from Anis. I think he's going to take this one. I have one turn to win it. If I have another drain life, I can win the game. Again, Anis, three terrors in hand, man. I've got the demonic hordes in hand. I think I've lost this one, to be honest. Because I can, I can attack putting him on three, but that's not going to be enough. And yeah, that's it. Wow, well done, Anis. You're winning this one. And that means uh, it's 1-1-1. One, one, one. Can you believe that? And we need to play another game. Well, we can't play because I love to play another game. So we're going to go to game number four. Game number four. Let's see who's going to win this one. I'm on to play at least. We're both not taking a mulligan. Finding a second swamp pass turn. And there is a drudge, of course, from Anis. All oh, these skeletons. And I'm trying it once again with my hippie. Will we see another weakness? Of course. <laughs> these weaknesses are good, man. They're impressive. Like my hypnotic specters have had zero value in this match. Like zero. I get, well, that's not entirely true. I can use them as a chum blocker. Uh, attacking with both drudges. I'm on 17. Played a jade statue. And there's a Sengir vampire. Okay, that's looking pretty good. The 4-4 flyer, it's really difficult to deal with. Okay, there is a Paralyze, but I have enough mana to untap. It does mean that I can probably do nothing else. Attacking with both, going to 15, untapping the Sengir. Let's see, finding another Swamp, and I'm not attacking. That's interesting. That is interesting, because I can't attack. And animating, blocking them both. 
And there's another drudge. I think I should just attack with the, with the Sengir, to be honest. I'm not sure why I'm not doing that. Playing a Swamp. And looking at my hand. Taking a zip of our beer is also important in this process, but I wonder what I'm going to do here. I should just, exactly, I should just swing in, right? No idea why I didn't do that the other turn. Playing an Icy Manipulator, tapping one of his drudges down in his upkeep. And uh, he's going to swing in here with his drudges, probably. Okay, there's a Dark Ritual. Oh, wow! Drain life on the Sengir. That is a good move. It's going to give him life, and he gets rid of the 4-4 Flyer. I'm going to drop to 14. And I'm going to attack here, putting Anis on 17. Play a Sinkhole. And right now, you know, you can see the Sinkhole doesn't have just as much value as if I would have had the Sinkhole early game or if I would have played a player who doesn't play monocolor. So Sinkle is not that good against Anis. I guess it could be worse because he does need a lot of mana for his Pestilence regeneration trick. Attacking with two of his drudges right now. I wonder if I'm going to chump here if the moment has come. Yeah, I'm just going to chump. No, I'm going to take two. I'm going to go to 12. Probably just going to wait with chumping. I'm going to attack him again. He's on 14. I'm going to play another Jade. It looks like I can win this race. And we see that Anis has another Drain Life in hand. Ooh, that could be pretty decisive. He could play a Drain Life for 4, putting me on 8, and he would go to 18. So there's no need for him to do it now. First going to attack, of course. So I'm going to block 1, take a damage. Going to go down to 11. And he's going to pass turn. The Drain Life can really change the situation, especially if it can also find a Pestilence. Let's see what I can do here. Tapping four, animating both of my statues, swinging in for six. Going to put him on eight here. I mean, we're both playing mono black, which is the worst color to deal with artifacts, especially in alpha only. So we don't really have to worry about our artifacts. Playing another icy. Don't have enough, though, to, do, uh, to also use that icy. We see a weakness in hand, and, and like I said, in the deck deck, the weakness is just uh, not going to do much against the Jade Statue. He's going to attack for two here, probably, going to put me on nine. Or does he, does he want to keep blockers open to block the Jade Statues? Attacking with both. Going to chump one, going to go to ten. Is he going to use his Drain Life now? Is that what he wants to do? I mean... It's not looking good for Anis, I have to say, even though he's got the Drain Life. I think the second Jade statue is just too much. You know, he's taking six a turn. Only going to attack with one. And, oh, and then I'm going to play a Drain Life. Okay, I was like, why am I only attacking with one? But now I understand. Oh, man. Do I actually have enough mana for that? I don't... Do I? Oh, I do. I actually do have enough. There's a mana under there. Okay, no. Fair. I won fair and square. I was a little bit worried. Sometimes when you look back at these videos, you see that you've made a mistake, but uh, no. This all makes perfect sense. Well, thank you very much, Anis, for this game. And uh, once again, a thank you for Dion for lending me his alpha deck, man. I had a lot of fun. Let me know if you like these games and I'll post some more Alpha 40 League games. And like I said in the intro, if you'd like to know more about the Alpha 40 League rules, please uh, visit the uh, Northern Paladins. So go to northernpaladins.com for more information. And thank you for watching. And if you want to support the channel, you can, like always, leave a like, leave a comment, become a sub. All that helps. And what you can also do is you can support the channel financially by becoming a patron via Patreon. There's probably a link popping up right now. Click on there and you'll see the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, the wonderful. Patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Ik het als fikker te somber gezien.